On today's episode, I talk to Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt and pro MMA fighter Annie Mayne. He's a good friend of mine. He uh, has been fighting for a long time, since he's been 19 years old, and he has reached the pinnacle of Japanese MMA and has won the featherweight King of Pancrase title, which is very impressive. He has a fight coming up, but his next goal is to try to get back into the UFC. He was on the Ultimate Fighter show many years back, and they didn't give him a chance, but now he's trying to prove himself otherwise. So if you guys are listening to this and you know anybody, please try to give him a little push. Mention his name if you know some UFC execs. He's a really, really fun fighter to watch. You can check out his last fight on UFC Fight Pass, and uh, we hope you guys enjoy. Today's podcast is brought to you by Inverted Gear. Go to invertedgear.com for all your jujitsu gear needs. Type in the coupon code SHOWTHEART15 and save some good money. Our next sponsor is Chimera Coffee. Go to ChimeraCoffee.com, Chimera Coffee with a K, and uh, purchase some of their coffee. They infuse their coffee with nootropics. They're basically things that help your brain operate faster. Google it. It'll help you out. Um, type in the coupon code show the art and you will save, um, I think 15% something. It's a surprise. Go plug in, show the art coupon code and save some money and enjoy. Andy main. Welcome to the show. You are the king of Pancras and a former alumni of the ultimate fighter show. How are you doing, man? I'm doing excellent. How are you doing? man? I'm good, man. Um, a lot of people don't know that we've known each other for a while and you've known my instructor marcos for even longer than that so you want to explain that little story because that's a fun story yeah uh <laughs> yeah no marcus uh i met marcus at um at a, at a actually a submission only tournament it's funny that like all this stuff's going on with the sub only scene and um you know in the finishers tournament show the art you guys are you know doing the east coast thing and um, and, and I was just joking around last time we, we were, you guys were at our gym for the, for the tournament. I was like, man, Marcus and I have, Marcus and I have been doing the, the sub only thing forever. We, so that's the way we met. Like, I don't know how long ago that was. Um, at least like yeah, nine I mean, years. Yeah. I want to like, say nine, yeah. eight, nine years at least. Wow. And, uh, yeah, I, we met in the finals of, uh, of this division, uh, one of the divisions for this uh, end game tournament that was held at uh Meadowlands, I think. I don't even remember. I think um, he did say but, it was uh, Meadowlands. Yeah, yeah. So it was a fun match. We went real for like something like twelve minutes or something and then uh, he ended up catching me with some sort of ankle lock. So it's like you know, and it's just funny, it's just ironic kind of like the way things have progressed that like that was kind of the way we met. Yeah. Um so way back way back when. Yeah. yeah. How yeah. how old were you? At that time, do you, do you think about at what rank were you guys? Um, I believe he was a brown belt and I was a purple belt, and um, I mean it was no key, but um, and uh, I was I think nineteen, wow. eighteen or nineteen. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure he was still yeah. a purple belt by at that time. But... He was a uh, he had been around yeah well he had been around a while yeah um. He may, yeah, he may have not had gotten his brown belt yet, but I know he he was like coming off of like a layoff from a couple of things, and yeah, and then after that he was he got real involved and in obviously with the gym and all kinds of stuff. And yeah. then I think like the next time I saw him, like I you know we, we stayed in touch. But the next time I saw him was I, I competed in the uh, tournament you guys had at um at your at your gym a couple, a couple like a year or two ago I mean, with Dylan Danis. Yes. And my brother, we were all in the tournament. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Yeah. It's funny because uh that was like that was like six years ago, five or six years ago. And again, even that was like our take on submission only before submission only got popular. And we were trying yeah, to yeah. do something like that. And it kinda it, you know, that that actually the tournament that you guys competed in, um inspired us too to to really like and appreciate the submission only style mm-hmm. and we tried to do yeah. that and we had i think two small tournaments like that but again it was way before like the the, the outburst of yeah, the, only the blow up yeah yeah and that was definitely it's funny that you said that because i forgot all about that but ever since mm-hmm. then we've mm-hmm. been wanting to do like a submission only tournament again we just it mm-hmm. just took us so long to do it yeah yeah well putting a tournament together is you know it's 
it's an interesting thing because I've had a number of people approach me now about doing our own thing uh-huh. at our gym because we have all that space. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's just kind of one of those things, like, I feel like, you, you know, you and the finishers guys have a good, good partnership going and good branding already behind it. And, um, you know, and then obviously doing the cash prize thing and people show up for money. So, um, it's, uh, it, 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 it like, it, it led itself to be something that could be as big as it is in two shows and then, you know, hopefully continue to grow. Whereas like, you know, I don't want to just throw something together and say, oh, we're on, here we are on the bandwagon. You know what I mean? So it's like, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it right. And uh, for me right now, it's just, you know, like uh, the gym's doing awesome. My fighting career is, you know, is, is, is going well. So uh, my focus is there and I'm not going to, I'm not going to spread myself too thin. So uh, for now, I'll be participating with you guys or, you know, or, or, you know, whoever else is around. For sure, man. Yeah. And you guys have a massive school. Uh, what is it like? Ten thousand square feet or something like that? Yeah, we're just we're we're right around ten thousand, a little bit more. Um, just Damn. expanded for the third time in under four <laughs> years. Uh, just you know, we've been we've been blessed, man. With just it's not just us, you know. I mean, Mikey and I really grind and and we get out there. And I mean, the biggest thing is you know the passion. I think people show up, and you know, before we had the big space, we had a little little spot in the back of a industrial park, and you know, people loved it. You know, we did, we, we made the gym as nice as it could possibly be. It was kind of like the diamond in the, in the rough. And then, you know, once we got to a certain point, we were like, we're going to, we, we're going to create what we want to train, the place that we want to train, you know, like, yeah, we love training everywhere, but we wanted to, I, we both traveled around the country and around the world and trained all over the place. And then, man, when I walked into a 10,000, 15,000 square foot facility that just goes on and on, you're just with so much map space. I, I'm like, I love that, you know, yeah. like I get claustrophobic, you know, I get a little claustrophobic when I roll. So, um, you know, and not even, Hey, there's great, excellent gyms that are smaller. I mean, you know, like I'll go to Marcello's and not that that's a small gym, but it's packed, you know, and it is what it is and you roll and you deal with it. But man, like I, I knew what I wanted. So I was like, I, I want to create this for ourselves and for the people that train with us and we did and, and you know we're really proud of that but it, it has a lot to do with all the people that have been involved all the instructors that we've you know brought in and everything mm-hmm. we're, just, we're surrounded by great people that's what it comes down to yeah man and it's so impressive walking into a massive school like that obviously you need people to come in and fill the space out but mm-hmm. whether there's people on the mat or not it's impressive but also it kind of shows where they're at like all right Hey, this school can afford a big place. They must be doing right. well. They must be doing things right. They must have good instructors. Mm-hmm. You know, like before you before they even take a class, that psychological kind of mm-hmm. uh, alarm uh, goes off in a good way, and they're like, "All right, you know, I'm in a good spot. I rather." What's more impressive? Who has better teachers? More than likely, the school that can afford this huge facility, as opposed to right, right. you know, a school that's like a tiny storefront. And they might be mm-hmm. good instructors, but, you know, just yeah. that, that, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, no, everything, everything plays into, you know, I've learned a lot about running a business since we started. I really didn't know very much. Thankfully, I've, I've been raised by my dad, who's, uh, you know, he's a business owner himself. And um, so I, you know, I had some knowledge and, and experience and, and I picked his brain as I grew. And also, you know, like Brian McLaughlin, my coach, he also owns a gym. I picked his brain and he really was selfless with his, uh, um, his knowledge and experience in, in running a gym. So like I said, it's a combination, but yeah, when it comes down to getting people in the door, you know, there's kind of this like, you know, there's this, this factor of like marketing where it's like, well, you don't want to be that cheesy, corny marketer. <laughs> but at the same time, if you have the product, and you know, you know, you know, you have something special to share. And on top of that, it's also how you survive. It's your, it's your living. Yeah. You need to get people in the door. And, um, and there's a lot of different factors that come into play. I mean, mm-hmm. I've, you know, I've had guys, you know, tell me it's like kind of gaudy to put up your belts and medals <laughs> and all your, your awards from winning over the years. And, you know, maybe it is a little bit, but realistically it's like well one i'm proud of what i've done over the years whether it's one medal or 20 medals yeah. i'm gonna i'm gonna hang it up you know and i think everybody should and two when somebody walks in the door and they they walk face first into a wall full of 
medals and belts and all that stuff, they're like, man, I'm surrounded by experts. It's just psychologically, that's just one more thing that's going to make them maybe sign up. And I don't know, maybe some people don't care. Yeah. And maybe they care about big training space. You know, maybe they care about air conditioning. You don't know what the, the potential client cares but about. you want to cover all grounds. You want to cover as many bases as possible. Nice. You know, if it doesn't, if you if you don't think it's going to negatively affect your your, your academy, mm. then then you should do it. And yeah, like having the big space, like I said, it's the one thing that separates us. It's like, okay, we have the instruction, we have the experience, we have the award, we have the you know whatever, but we didn't have the space. Yeah. And every you know we're kind of equal with everybody else. And I said, you know what? If we can build this this ten thousand square foot facility that I want to build, there's nobody in this area that's even that comes close. You know, I mean. Mm in regards to and what we offer too, the number of programs and that that's what i was trying to do in my you know in my area sure so that when you know my my goal is that when in if you're in my area and somebody thinks martial arts thinks fitness thinks anything like that they think you know pure mixed martial arts and that's it yeah it's funny because where our academy is like 35 minutes from you guys but yeah but we're not in the same area, which is crazy. Like we're, we're, we're pretty close, but we're not in the same area. It just goes to show like how many people you can take advantage of as a business owner. And it doesn't mm-hmm. matter how many schools are around you. There, yeah. there's tons of people to, to get in the door. Yeah. You just have to market well, to them and get them. Yeah, in absolutely. Them. And, and here's the thing too. And here's something that I've been trying to relay to other business owners um, or other mixed martial arts school owners is that, you know, for a very long time, martial arts schools, the kind of traditional martial arts schools, it's sort of like fighting for each student, right? It's like, I'm, you know, I, I'm going to fight for that student. And, you know, when one student leaves and goes to another gym, now all of a sudden there's this big trader. And then like that school is like, you know, there's, there's this, there's this negativity yeah. that's been associated with that part, part portion of martial arts school ownership for a very long time. and what I've, what what I set out to do, and I, you know, with my brother, and we we decided this. Is, my goal is not to fight for one student. My goal is to build the entire culture in this area. I want there to be two hundred thousand more people that know about martial arts, that appreciate martial arts, in part because of my school mm-hmm. and what I'm doing. If 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 two hundred thousand more people in the tri-state area know about martial arts and appreciate martial arts, you me, the guy down the street, and everybody else does better versus if we close our doors and close our, you know, shut our, our minds down to expanding the, the art as a whole. Yeah. And it, it, ironically, you guys, your, 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 you know, your mantra, show the art. I mean, that's what it's all about. You show that art, you get it out there, you get people to appreciate and want to be involved, everybody does better. Yeah. Like, I don't care, I don't want my competitors to not do good. I want them to do great because... Because in my mind, if if the guy down the street is doing good, then I'm doing amazing because I know I have a better product. You know what I mean? So gotcha. it's like I want him to do good because if he's doing good, I'm doing great. You know, if he's doing, if I'm doing bad, we're both probably both doing bad. You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? It's no, like that's point. the mentality. That's the mentality that has to that has to be like encompassed by the martial arts community, not fighting for one student. Mm. It doesn't work. I like that a know? lot, man. And and just having the mentality of like you you put up a, you put brought up a great point, but just having the mentality simply of oh I lost the student, oh they went to another yeah. school, oh no all this all this negativity that just pulls you down. Just having that mentality. So if you lose a student and they go to another school very close to you, there's a billion different reasons, and one of them could be they don't like you. At the end of the day, like you kind of can't dwell on those things, whether you're doing the right thing uh, or whether they're they're leaving for the right reasons or not. Like you got to have mm-hmm. that positive mentality, regardless. And yeah. a lot of people, and you can't, yeah, yeah. Well, and you, and you can't you can't control everybody. You yeah. know, that's the thing. I mean, I think in the martial arts community, there's this idea that oh, well, we're the sensei, you're the black belt, and you know, people have a lot of respect for you, and there's 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 people that take advantage of that in a negative way. You need to take advantage of that in a po- in a positive way. Yeah. And, you know, you don't know the situation. If somebody leaves my school for some reason, whatever that reason is, then, uh, you know, like, obviously, I w- I'm going to try to figure it out. I'm going to say, hey, you know, like, what is it? Is it, you know, is it this, is it that? But some people, they just got to go, you know? Yep. And, and usually, I mean, I don't, I don't even know, honestly. I don't even know how many people have left and gone somewhere else. I don't pay attention to that because it's, it's useless. It doesn't make me or my school better to pay attention to that. Yeah. You know, 
I have to make sure I, I want to try to close that back door. I want to try to retain more and more students every mm-hmm. month, make sure I'm not losing students. But at the same time, my goal is to make sure that the people on my mat are happy, that my instructors are, are doing what they're supposed to do and they're happy, and, and that, you know, like I said, that I'm continuing to grow the martial arts culture as a whole, that, that mm-hmm. my school ends up in the newspaper and, you know, a few more thousand more, more people hear about mixed martial arts. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And it's like yeah. if, if, if some of those people go to the school down the street, great. Hopefully some come to me too. You know, that that's how I look at it. And uh, and, and and you know what? Like, I, I, I can't say, like, am I right, am I wrong? All I can say is that so far... It, that meant that mentality, that approach has worked very well for us. Yeah, man. And, you know, it's okay. It's not like you're saying I, you forget about all the people that leave. Um, it's not that. It's like we just can't dwell on it. I, it it's, nice. Well, it's nice. It's nice for everybody to figure out why right. somebody left them to improve on your mistakes if there are any. But you can't dwell right. on it. No. You can't dwell on anything negative because negativity – the negative aspects of, of, of anything, running a business, fighting, training, doing jiu-jitsu, the negative aspects don't make you better. Yeah. And it's simple as that. You know what I mean? If, if it doesn't build you and make you better, make you stronger. Like, anytime I, I approach a situation, it's, it's always very objective. You know, it's like, how is this, is this, can this make me better? Can this help me in some way? If mm-hmm. it can't, if I don't see an end game for it, it's like, well, I could be mad and, you know, I could post on Facebook about, you know, oh, blah, 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 blah. But, you know, okay, well, what's, what's the best possible outcome from that? Because believe me, when I was younger, I, I did things, you know, probably the way that I shouldn't have. I reacted emotionally <laughs> to situations. Who you know, but I'm, I'm mature now. I've, I've, I've matured past that point. And, you know, I see it and I'm like, I re- the first thing I ask myself is like, one, is it worth my time and energy? Because I value my time and energy, number one, right? So it's like, I feel that I'm wasting time and energy, which is also in turn money if I'm spending time, you know, dwelling on the negative and two what's the best possible outcome the best possible outcome is maybe i make that person feel bad and then i kind of feel bad and then their family and that person will never refer me to anybody like you know what i mean yeah. it's like that makes no sense that's the best possible outcome the worst possible outcome is that person goes crazy and comes back and tries to attack you you know what i mean it's like why would i want to even <laughs> be involved it's like yeah. hey thank you for your business we love having you here you're always welcome back we hope to see you again soon. Sure. And that's it. You, you know, know what I mean? So, um, but, and, and you kind of got off track. But, yeah. But my ultimate, my point is just <laughs> that we built, we built a culture of, you know, or, or, or built the mantra of building the culture, mm. not just, you know, trying to get one student or two students. Yeah. I like that, man. And it, re- the, the negative aspect about that is it reminds me of something, Something that I've gone through. My dad works at a prison, and he's always telling me whenever there's, like, job openings, like, for corrections officers and whatnot. And, you know, he's like, hey, you should go do that. It's a good second job for you. You teach martial arts in the in the night. You can do that in the day. You get good benefits, pension, blah, blah, blah. But I keep telling him, like, I don't want to do that because why would I want to go to work every day and be surrounded by negativity, by negative people in prison with these <laughs> twisted mentalities? It's going mm-hmm. to seep into my regular life because I'm surrounded by it for eight hours, five days a week. And the same right. thing can be said for, for anything in your life. If you're hanging out with the wrong people, if you're dwelling on the wrong things all day, that's going to seep mm-hmm. into your regular life. If you're dwelling on all the people that leave you and, and focus on that negativity, you're, you're kind of it's taking away from all the positive you could be doing. And it's going to kind of put you down. Right. 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 Exactly. And then it's just like a slippery slope. So, yeah, it's all about just, you know, bringing, bringing a positive energy mm. and focusing on building the culture. You mm. know what I mean? I mean, it's a real thing. I keep saying it, but it's a real thing. It's like, you know, like you go out to, I, I, I say this because I, I've been to places where the culture is so strong. You go out to California, they have a gym every five minutes. Mm-hmm. You know, like you can throw, you can throw a rock from one martial arts gym to the other and they're all packed. You know, it's like they're not worried about it. I mean, yeah. maybe some, but for the most part, they're not worried about it because it's such a huge culture out there, like the surf culture, the martial arts culture. It's much bigger out there. Sure. So, like, my goal is not like, hey, you know, like, let me just take advantage of the few people that are interested. It's like, let me help build a culture as big as that's out there so that everybody in the martial arts community is doing well and can build it further and further and further. And, and we, you know, we can all make a living. Everybody that wants to can make a living doing this. You know, that that's my mentality. So, 
and I think it's a real one. I think if and I think if everybody, all the old school guys, the new school guys, everybody got on board with that and started talking, you know, stop, you know, putting mm-hmm. putting each other down and just, you know, I I really think these tournaments are so good because it really does start to bring more and more of these like schools together, and you're just like, oh, you know, these guys are all awesome. Yeah. You know, we should all be pushing pushing each other. You know, it's like every chance I get, I'm like, man, go visit that guy's gym. Go visit. Oh, if you're in you know, so-and-so, like, go visit there, you know, like, make sure that people know about the other places, you know, especially the quality gyms, because, hey, there's not, there's there's gyms out there that are not good, you know, mm-hmm. there's low quality, quality instruction, like, there's people existing out there that are taking students that really shouldn't be, right, so it's sure. like, we shouldn't be fighting with each other, we should be pumping each other up, so that, you know, like, every, the community knows, the culture knows that these are the experts, mm-hmm. these are the guys. That's what it's about. Absolutely, man. And I think that mentality will allow you to continue to be successful and even more so. And like you said, bring just the whole jiu-jitsu community, especially in our state in New Jersey and on the East Coast, um, the awareness of jiu-jitsu and martial arts will, will be higher. And like you said, when more people are aware, you create more... Of a, of a selection to pick from, more eyes on the sport, which will increase everybody's uh, potential, mm-hmm. essentially. You just have to be right, the one right. to take advantage of it. Now, moving yeah. on. And go on and, yeah, well, sorry. And going back to <laughs> yeah, the yeah, tournament yeah. thing, it's like that's, that's how these guys start to make more and more money, right? It's like the whole culture grows. It's like you, it's, like, it's going to be the same thing, you know? It's like but there's only so many tournaments that can, that can pay. But if the culture grows by hundreds of thousands, then more and more people can pay to see a match, yeah. right? And they can pay, they can spend the pay per view. And now all of a sudden, you know, you Eddie Bravo is giving out hundred hundred thousand dollar prizes instead of fifty thousand or twenty thousand. So, you know what I mean? It's like the point. whole thing grows, man. That's how it grows. Yeah, culture's got to grow. You know, yeah. we all got to get on board. That's all it is. Good point, man. Great point. Now, getting into more of you personally, your MMA yeah, career. Man where all right where it's at now where it's going i know you're recovering from an injury um yeah a terrible injury uh, yeah the worst right? uh ACL, yeah AC, ACL, ACL reconstruction now how long do you think you'll be ready to go before you can take on a next fight well i actually literally just signed today for my next fight which is going to be november 13th awesome um nice yeah so i'll be uh I'll be going back out to Japan to defend my title. Uh, I actually feel great, honestly. I mean, like, you know, they gave me, they, I had my surgery back in, I actually had two surgeries, but one was a little bit lesser. It was like a, a meniscus cleanup after I got the ACL done. Mm-hmm. Um, but the ACL was a big one. And uh, that was back in February, around the four months mark, four months after I started like training, moving around, doing some stuff. And, you know, doing all my PT three days a week, plus doing everything on my own. Um, you know, just, re- I mean, I want to get back in there, you know, yeah. like the clock's ticking. So, um, so yeah, so I've done everything and thankfully I feel great training, um, started sparring hard, um, you know, just this, this, this last couple of months, uh, last couple of weeks. And, um, you know, I'm going to kind of take another two, three weeks at this pace and then middle of September, I'll be you know, stepping it up a little bit, getting into a true fight camp and get ready for for that fight. Awesome, man. That's great to hear. Now, for those who don't know who you are or have have yet to see any of your fights and, and want to become interested, can you give a little bit about of, about your martial arts background? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, I mean, I'm Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt. Um, uh, I've been fighting professionally since I was 19. I'm 27, so I've been, I've been fighting professionally since I was 19 years old. I you know, had my first amateur fight when I was 18. Um, yeah, I've just been, been at it, been all over the all over the, the state, you know, training a lot of different coaches and uh, different teams and, you know, just really doing everything in my power to uh, get the best from, you try to absorb the best from, you know, all the different different teams and coaches in the area and, and you know, in this area and then also travel a lot. So, mm-hmm. Uh, I was on the Ultimate Fighter back in 2010. After the Ultimate Fighter, I traveled around Arizona, Montreal. I went up to Montreal, trained with George St. Pierre's team. Um, stayed out at Alliance MMA in California. I mean, I've been all over the place. Um, uh, Syndicate MMA in, in, in Las Vegas. You know, a lot of really great places. 
Um, a lot of people that people know, like Vinny Magalhaes, yeah. you know, a good friend, and I, I love working with him anytime I'm in Vegas. Um, you know, Wilson Hayes, whenever I'm in California, or he was in California, he's not now, but, um, you know, just wherever I go, I try to seek out just, just experts in, in the field. And, um, yeah, so, you know, I was on Ultimate Fighter. Um, since then, I've basically gone undefeated and, uh, and uh, have won split decision loss, but, you know, I don't, I don't agree with the decision, but <laughs> yeah. you know, how, I, I'm always biased, right? How, so, uh, how was um, it to be on the Ultimate Fighter show? I, and I don't want to dwell on it, too, or not dwell on it, but focus on that topic too much because I'm sure you've talked about it too many times. But how, how yeah. was it to be on that kind of a show? A on a show period, um, and B surrounded by um, high level competitors and coaches like Team GSP yeah. and Team Conscious. Well, you like, know what? It was, it was like. Uh, it was a lot of fun, you know, like, obviously, I mean, I'm 21. I was one of the youngest people. I mean, there's another 21 year old on the, on the show, but I literally turned 21 like a week before the show started filming. So like, I, and which is the cutoff, like you can't be younger than 21. So, yeah. um, so, you know, it was a lot of fun. I honestly, I really wasn't ready for it. Mm. But as, as a, as a fighter, you know, I only had a couple of, I've been fighting professionally for one, for uh, a little over one year. And, um, just you know, I just I don't think I was ready for it. Uh, I wish I like I wish I had the experience now, you know, that yeah. I have now. And that I even I like I think back to even like a couple fights after that, I was like, man, like, I didn't really know anything. And I had to take I took a little bit of a year and a half off due to uh, getting sick um, a few years back. And during that time, it was just develop, 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 train, and like you know, I, I just evolved so much as an athlete since then. But yeah, the show was fun though, you know. It's, it's it's an experience, you know, like yeah. like life's about experiences and you know, even like with Japan, um, you know, like I, I wanted to fight in Japan because I, I before I got the offer, like I, I was like talking about trying to get a fight out in Japan just because like it's the homeland for martial arts mm-hmm. and just you know, it's it, it's it's experience. I mean like I get to say, Hey, I have headline for one of the biggest um events in Tokyo doing martial arts, doing what I love in yeah. front of the, 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 the Japanese fans. I mean, it's like, it's, you know, what more, there's not much more you can ask for as a martial arts other than obviously, you know, being like in the UFC and, sure. you know, chasing that, chasing that title. Yeah, man. But, but like you said, even that you're in Japan and you right. won a, a big title in Japan, not just any title, but like the title in Japan, Pancrase title. Right, right. Right. How did that feel winning that kind of a championship it's not like just winning a local uh right. mma pro uh you know championship how did it feel to win a big yeah. championship like that i remember watching the fight and you know <laughs> that was pretty impressive i mean it, it's like it's hard to explain because it was it was one of those things like i said it, you know it was something that i wanted to experience fighting there and then when I got there, I was like, man, I can, I can work my way to that title. I can win that title. And it was the only title. I mean, you know, like I started uh, my martial arts career at the Hens of Gracie affiliate. And, you know, like I was fans of like Ricardo Almeida. I mean, I still am, you know, like Ricardo Almeida. And, um, and, and he was, like, you know, he was known for like at the time, the, the king of Pancrase. Like he was the, he was the guy that beat Martin Nate Marquardt, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? And like, took that title and when that was when it was like hot you know like and then pancreas went kind of dropped down for a little bit and then they kind of resurged and like i'm kind of a part of that resurgence um but like you know that josh barnett you know just like some of these guys like i i just remember <laughs> saying you know because people ask me all the time like oh these fight for this title this title. I was like, honestly these regional titles they're not important to me you know if i get an opportunity of course i'll fight for them but it's not like it's not like, oh my gosh, I want to become the so and so champion. It, it, it didn't mean anything to me outside mm-hmm. of just, you know, being the best in that division. And, but, but being the Pancreas champion was something that was really special to me. And when that opportunity came, I was like, this is, this is like crazy. Nothing's ever like, like formulated. Like you've had this, like this goal in your head for this long and you're like, here it is. And I'm headlining, and not only am I headlining, but they're going to broadcast this on UFC Fight Pass. So everybody, you know, the UFC people are going to see it. I'm fighting Nam Fan, who ironically was on this yeah. <laughs> on this the Ultimate Fighter with me. He was actually the guy that got me my first fight in Japan. Nice. You know, and now I'm fighting him. And 
Um, you know, and he's a former UFC fighter with eight UFC fights. So it's a guy, it's a great opportunity. I mean, it was like, you couldn't write, write a better story leading up to that fight. I mean, for me anyway. And when I, you know, when I, when he tapped and also a guy that's never been tapped, never been submitted. Mm -hmm. And when he tapped, it was like, like you just like it literally, I mean, people say cloud nine, whatever you want to call it. Like you're just all of a sudden, like you're in the moment and it's like, you're like, you're like, is this real? It's like kind of like being awake in a dream kind of mm. thing, just for a very short period of time. Yeah. But you're just like in that moment, and it's like there's, there's, there's not a lot like it. And um, it was like and, whoa, and, and it was just yeah. I mean, yeah, I like broke down. You know, like the yeah. second they wrapped that belt around me, I'm <laughs> crying. I'm la- I'm like happy. I'm sad. I'm like I don't even know what's going on right now. Um, and uh, it, yeah, so like it was just elated. You know, it, I was elated, uh, and and. There's not much more I can wait. I can explain it, but just if you've ever imagined anything that you've just strived for, and then it takes years. I mean, it's years. You yeah, know, it takes yeah. years to reach something like that. I mean, I had been fighting almost ten years, and then to to capture a title like that, and you and, know, and then when I captured it, it was something special. And most people won't ever be able to experience something like that. That's why I wanted to hear how you felt because. You know, people think it's just this one big thing that happens, and you're like, "Whoa!" It's like falling into a million dollar, uh, you know, right. no, uh, no. the build up of it. Of like you said, you had this this goal, or you had this dream, and then slowly it starts to become a reality. So the excitement builds right. over time, and then the intensity mm-hmm. builds for it, and then the anxiousness for it, and then you finally get the opportunity. Now, I'm sure just having the opportunity, you were like wow, I'm pretty content right now just getting the opportunity. And then winning it, like, yeah. people don't get that because most people, you know, they, they don't live in a world where they can pursue their dreams. And um, Yeah, yeah. Uh, you no, know. it was, uh, yeah, it was special. And and it's, um, you know, it's like my my approach to fighting has always been a couple of end games. You know, it's like I have goals in fighting. I love fighting. I love every fight. Um, but I have particular end games and one of that was one of my end games. Well, one was to fight in Japan. Mm. And obviously, you know, every time I fight, I plan on winning. Um, and then when I got there, you know, once I got the opportunity to fight there, it was to win that belt. It was to, you know, take that home. And then, you know, my other is the UFC, it's the UFC and the UFC title. Like that's, that's it. That's what's left. And I mean, not that I don't enjoy, like I said, I'm going to go and defend my belt now until I get the opportunity to fight for the UFC. Um, you know, this is what I'm going to do and I'm going to put everything I am into every single fight. But it's like, it's always about that end game, you know, mm-hmm. it, it, these are all means to an end. I can't lose a fight because that means I can't accomplish what I'm trying to accomplish, which is that UFC opportunity and that UFC belt. So, um, so that's kind of like my mentality going into it. So that's why it's like when you're so like kind of laser focused on that one thing and then it happens. You know, it, it is something special in your life, and I, I believe it only happens a few times in, in anybody's life. You know? sure. like, and it's not just like something like that. I mean, you know, there's a number of different ways that people can, can experience a similar feeling, but um, but it is something you know in regards to just that climb and just reaching kind of the pinnacle for that moment. You know. Mm-hmm. Now, what's next for you? How obviously you have to keep winning, but how do you get into the UFC? What the hell's going on? Like who, yeah. who can we get in touch with? Who do we call right now? Who do we text right now? Like, you gotta, cause your performance you gotta, was very impressive and it was on right. UFC fight pass and you submitted a guy who's never been submitted and he was right. in the UFC. Like what more do you yeah. have to do? Um, well, unfortunately it's the state of the UFC right now. The UFC has bloated its division. Yeah. Um, and, and there's too many fighters and it's unfortunate. And then they continue to do ultimate fighter season. They continue. Now they're doing this other show looking for a fight and whatever. And they're all cool and what, and, and, and fun. But unfortunately, every time there's an ultimate fighter, they sign like, you know, six guys yeah. and they don't have room for those six guys. And a lot of times those six guys are not quality guys. Like yeah. this season is like the first time they're doing like a champion season where they're pulling champions from around the world. So I'm interested yeah. in the season, but but, like, other than that, like, I watch a season of the Ultimate Fighter, and I'm like, man, yes. I'm like, you know, these guys don't don't even deserve to be in the same, you know, training room yeah. as somebody with the experience level that I have, yet they're going to get an opportunity simply for timing, you know? It's sure. like, I didn't get an opportunity back then 
for multiple reasons. One, I, I mean, I didn't have the greatest performances. I had one good one and one not so good one. But also, they had absorbed the WEC that same month, and um, they had a million freaking fighters come into the division. Yeah. So they were, like, pulling as little as possible. But, yeah, so, like, the people in my position right now, I'm not the only one, um, are are kind of like it's like kind of sit and wait and hope that somebody gets hurt mm. and and you can fill you can fill a late a late replacement fight like and that's kind of that's kind of it you know it's like I want to say like yeah I gotta just win this fight I mean I thought if one of them was gonna do it it was gonna be the Nam fan fight it's like how do you beat I mean he's the second or third Zuko fighter that I've beaten <laughs> you know like I've beat beaten these guys and handily you know what I mean it's like I beat him worse than at least half of the guys that fought him. I mean, yeah. he brought like guys like Mike Brown, I think to a uh, decision. And I mean, he fought some tough dudes. He beat, um, Cole Miller, I think I forget. I, I forget everybody, but you know, like it's just, he's had some battles in the UFC. It's like guys that like that, that had tough fights for him and were lost to him. And I go out and, 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 you know, Finish not him. for nothing, yeah put it on him, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> and, and impressively and, and tap him, you know, uh, and, and I don't, I'm not in, like, I don't deserve to be, to be in the UFC. Like, that doesn't make sense to me. I have, I have, I'm basically as high up as you can go on a regional level. Mm -hmm. You know, I like guess I have the international title. I'm actually higher than a regional level. I'm an international champion. Yeah. Um, but you know, it is what it is. You can't. And again, like going back to the next, like, I can't dwell on that. I have to, like, I, I'm aware of it. But I can't dwell on it. I gotta just keep fighting and winning and, and focusing on doing, you know, doing my best and and uh, you know, I'm trying to figure out what it is, what it's gonna be. You know, is it tweet? You know, like a part of me wants to just like do I start like you know talking smack on everybody? You know, it's like is that what I gotta do? Like yeah. that's not really me. But is that what it's gonna take? Like I gotta call out all these guys? You know, it's yeah. like last uh, at on the on 202 with uh, Conor McGregor and Nate Diaz. On the same card, there was a Conor McGregor teammate, um, the Russian Hammer, or whatever Artem. his name is, and then Artem, yeah, yes. and then he's fighting the the Diaz teammate who was five and two, you know, tough kid, but yeah. you know, no, like barely, you know, just doesn't have half the experience that I have, yeah, and and you know, they both look like crap, and I'm like, <laughs> I would literally fight them back to back, yeah, like five times in a row, you know what I mean? Like when you start to feel that way, you're like. Okay, like, what the heck do I gotta do? Yeah. Like, why did they get? Why are they still in? Why is this guy Artem still in? He's twelve and twelve. He's <laughs> lost thirteen <laughs> times as a pro. You know why? You know what I mean? It's well, who, I know why. Because it's who you but, know. So it, does it come down to yeah. that too? Like you having to be like a a bandwagon hopper and and like a groupie of like a, a famous well, fighter. Well, unfortunately, that's you know? that's the question. That's the yeah. big question. Is like, do you have to jump on these bandwagons? You know, at what point does the UFC wait a minute? UFC say, wait a minute, let's just take the best again from around the world. Let's not just take, you know, you know who. The, let's not base this on politics. You know, yeah. so I don't know, but I, I think my goal now is just to become undeniable. I mean, there is a certain point where, like, if if you're winning and winning and winning and winning, and then you know, like, I want I want people around the world. Like right now, like I'm on a good streak and you know, whatever, I've got the title and this, this and that. But, you know, people aren't saying like, Andy has to be in. Like, I, I, I need to get to a point where it's like maybe I'm on a 10 fight streak or whatever it is that people are going to be like, well, you know, like this is absolute garbage that this guy's not in right sure. now. It's like that's really all that's left. That or just be ready all the time for that late replacement fight. Yeah, I mean, it, definitely you need to get a fan support um, and it helps yeah. to, to be on a win streak, but also it helps to do things like this, you know, not to push my yeah. own agenda, but it does help to get your, yourself yeah. out there on, on the media yeah. and do, well, you know, yeah, it, definitely. I mean, I, I, you know, I like, love doing this kind of stuff and yeah. talking and, you know, and, and, and hope that kind of like people get to know me a little bit and want to, want to jump on kind of on my, on the, on what I'm doing, you know, it's sure. like, Hey, you know, let me, let's get behind this kid. He's like real, you know, he's high energy and, um, good attitude and you know it's like something a little different something fresh it's like let me be the antithesis of like you know Conor McGregor it's like hey you know like I'll get in your face but you know like I'm not you're not going to drag me into the mud you know what I mean yeah. it's like I'm 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 the opposite you know it's like it's like let's see that matchup you know not necessarily me versus Conor but I'm just saying like that that you know why is it always like the 
the bad the bad boy so to speak that's like getting the attention it's like you know why do I, why do I, I gotta go out here and like i gotta put everybody down like that's the gig it's like yeah. i can't just be you know and that's do my not thing, you show that i'm the best yeah right that's, that's not you and that's so. one of the things i liked about watching you fight um because i knew you and i knew what kind of character you are and what kind of maturity you had developed and how you handle yourself outside of you know the spotlight and when you watch somebody fight or compete, knowing that they have good character, knowing that they're like a good representative for martial arts, uh, teaching, coaching, being an athlete, being a good sportsman, and you watch them fight, it makes you feel even better about them. And it right. makes you want to follow them and want to, to push their agenda. So, yeah. you know, yeah. I like well, that you're I'm, not that's going That's what I'm hoping there. over time happens. Yeah. Keep rattling heads and, and choking necks, I guess, yeah. right? <laughs> That's it, right? Yeah. Hopefully, after your next fight, it's undeniable. I, I believe that if you keep going the route that you're taking, you will get into the UFC. And like you, like you said, you just got to keep nailing it in and being consistent. Yeah. And eventually, mm -hmm. people are going to see, like, you don't have a 12-12 and 12 record. You know, you right. should be fighting top guys. Right. <laughs> what inspires you? What inspires maybe a daily thing that you do or just your, your martial arts career in general or like what inspires you when need when you're in need of inspiration? Uh it's it's the people. It's you know, like I, I have a close knit you know, obviously I have a big community with my gym and stuff, but I have a very close knit group of people that I care a lot about. Um, you know, like my brother and my parents and my fiance and uh things like that. So, um, you know, few years back um my my focus shifted to to them you know i mean opening the gym had a lot to do with with my brother you know it was me just wanting to be involved with something with my brother so that we could just be involved with this for for base hopefully the rest of our lives you know it's like uh you know that that was a big part of that um you know when i my relationship with my fiance got serious it was like man you know it's like this isn't about just me anymore you know it's about it's about her and, 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 and us and, and our future and things like that. So, yeah. um, so like, you know, those people and even my parents, you know, it's like, I didn't take the traditional route. Right. You know, it's like, I didn't, I didn't do things the way that, you know, parents would not necessarily hope, but like, be comfortable <laughs> with their kids taking. So, you know, for me, it was showing that, Hey, you know, it's like, I'm okay. I'm going to be okay. And, and I'm going to make you guys proud and I'm going to do it the right way. And I'm going to be honest and fair about what I do. And that's a lot, that's a big part of the way I am too. It's like the way I was raised. Um, so yeah, it's a hundred percent about the people, um, that, you know, that give me inspiration anytime. I don't feel like getting on the treadmill or something or do, because believe me, this part of training, I hate, I'm not, you know, people, a lot of fighters talk about how they love the grind. I hate the grind. <laughs> I hate it. I love training. I love doing martial arts. I love doing jujitsu and, and kickboxing, but I hate getting on treadmills. I hate getting in the pool to swim. It, I despise it. But, you know, when I think about the people that are, you know, behind me and, and, and the energy that they've put into, in, into, you know, my life, um, you know, there's, 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 you know, there's nothing more, more motivating than that, mm. you know? So, um, so that's what it's about. It's just about, it's about the people, it's about the people I care about. Nice, man. Well said. I feel like most people are in line with that. Like they're, they're inspired by the people that they surround themselves with their loved ones. And it's a great motivation. Yeah. I mean, I don't have kids yet, but you think about how many people like turn their lives around for their kids, right? You know, it's like you have people that are unhealthy or, you know, maybe not in the job that they feel they want to be in or in their unhealthy, unhappy, whatever the case is. And all of a sudden they have a kid and it's like, you know, not everybody, unfortunately, but a lot of people are like, Oh my gosh, I got to get my stuff together and, 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 and get, get on track. Cause I got to be here for this kid. Right. And all they had, all of a sudden they have some, somebody that they care that much about, but you know, there's people around you all, all over the place. It doesn't take somebody like a kid, you know, it's yeah. like you have a brother or a sister or a mom or a dad or a best friend, like anybody, you know, anybody that, and, and, and also like being selfless and or not selfless, but like aware enough of seeing, you know, and seeing and appreciating the time that other people put into your life, so especially for people like fighters, like people like me, it's like, you know, we get a lot of our life is very self-centered. I mean, I guess that's everybody, but, you know, it's a very like, you know, I have to do this. I have to get my training done. I have to do, you know, I have to win this fight. I have to, me, 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 right? But, 
there's so many people that are involved in that, like the coaches, the, the training partners, this and that. And it's like when you realize how many people are giving you time and, and you know, yeah, you're giving them time too, but it's like they're giving you time. They're, they're helping you be who you want to be. It shouldn't really be very hard to get motivated off of that. You yeah. know, it's like, man, you know, it's like that's, you know, like there, there, there's there's nothing more motivating than that. So it's like I don't need to wait till I have a kid to get my, get my butt in line, you know, it's <laughs> yeah. like. I have plenty of people that are counting on me in, in, in a way. Maybe they are, maybe they're not. They're not going to be, you know, worse off if I fail at being a fighter or whatever. But, but, but they're they're going to be better off in some way by my success. You know what I mean? So sure. it's like it, it, now I, I share my success with them. It's sort of like that quote out of that uh, that show, you know, Into the Wild or whatever, where happiness is only real when it's shared. Mm. It's like I kind of I, I kind of believe in that. You know, it's like you know what I'm doing is better because of the people. You know, it's like, so what if I climb to the top of the mountain and 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 everybody can, can see me? It's like I I I, I want to climb and I want to take a bunch of people with me and yeah. I want to share share the success and share what I do with them. And that's a lot about what the gym is about too. You know, it's, you know, it allows me to do what I do, but it's also me being able to share it with hundreds of people. You know, so sure. um, that. And, you know, that's something that needs to be said to people that have big dreams that want to be the best at whatever they're doing. They don't realize that these the best in the world, they're not just doing it for themselves. They might say, oh, I'm doing this for me. I'm trying to get this win. You know, it's about my career. But like you said, a lot of the best in the world, what they don't say is that they have people around them, whether it's their family or their close friends or their mom or whatever that they're trying to bring up with them, that they're trying to make yeah. pr- make them seem proud of them. Mm-hmm. And it's okay yeah. to not yeah. have your main motivation surrounded by yourself. It's okay to, to want to be the best mm-hmm. because of the people that are around you. Definitely. It's, it's huge. Yeah. I mean, who watches a movie... Like the the best part about watching a movie is talking about it with your friends afterwards. Right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, like yeah. it's, No, we're not yeah. we're we're not solitary people, you know. I mean, to be the best, I believe you have to be able to be solitary, like you have to be able to, you know, do work on your own, you know, like yes. you have to put the time in for yourself. You have to want it for yourself. Mm-hmm. I mean, you, you do. But you you also I mean, you don't have to do anything, but you should also um you know appreciate you know everything that you have and the people that are involved in your life and and recognize how important that is and and what it means you know it's like i tell people all the time i mean like personally but like when i go fight i mean just just even like my coach brian you know i mean he flies out to japan with me and just 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 on that alone you know just on the fact that that guy takes a 14-hour trip with me out to japan you know, sits in a tiny little room and, <laughs> and, and, and is there, you know, he's there. I can't walk out into that cage and underperform yeah. when I got Brian in my corner. You know what I mean? It's like, how, how, if I fight, if you know, it's like, how dare I walk out into that cage <laughs> under, underprepared, I should say, not yeah. necessarily underperformed, but underprepared. Like, it's like, I, like, what am I going to walk out of a cage after I lose and say, man, I didn't do the, the sprints I should have done. You know, I'm going to tell that to Brian after he just flew 14 hours to, to be in my corner for a fight. Mm. Get out of here. You know what I mean? It's like that's the motivation that, like, people need to recognize to to be very successful. And I think a lot, too. You know, I think a lot, too, for sure. But for me, it, it's that. You know, it's so my true. brother. It's everybody. It's like, oh, you know, like, I, the guys at home, it's my, it's my students that are, that are watching the gym while I'm gone. It's like, my, my, my students are taking time out of their lives to make sure my gym doesn't burn to the ground while I'm out in Japan fighting and I'm going to not do my sprint that I needed to do. Yeah. I'm not going get, to get my swim in. You know what I mean? It's like, that is the motivation, right? Mm. Last question or last series of questions. Right. If a listener hasn't seen you fight yet, how would you describe your fighting style? Maybe who? Do oh, you man. Resolve? It's hard, right? <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, you know what? I think, um, I, I've over the years I've I've tried to absorb the best of, of of the best. So like I've tried to learn how to kick like an Anderson Silva, to you know take shoot takedowns like a George St Pierre, um and 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 to box like I like I'm, I like the DS style boxing, Nick and Nate Diaz, you know that overwhelming kind of high pace, um, high volume yeah. kind of style of boxing. So um, to pinpoint like one at this point, it's tough. Um, you know, like with my jujitsu, I, I like, I 
I, I love the Damien Maya approach. I just try to just smother and, you know, pass, mount, mm. roll, ground and pound, make him turn, give, you know, give me the submission, you know, don't make me take it. You know, I'm going to yeah. make him give it to me. So, um, yes, I mean, I'm a freestyle fighter. I mean, most of my fights are exciting. You know, I get in there. I'm not afraid to trade. I, you know, I'll box. I, you know, got some fancy kicks and all kinds of stuff. I can wrestle, you know, so, uh, and, and on the ground. I mean, I, I honestly feel at 145 pounds, I'm, you know, top five grapplers in the world um, in fighting MMA right now. You know, MMA grappling, not, not you know, not jiu-jitsu, yeah. uh, necessarily jiu-jitsu fighter, but like, you know, f- fighters fighting MMA, successful competitor right now. I feel like I'm one of the best grapplers in the world in the game. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and I'm going for it. I'm fishing for submissions the whole time. You're never going to find me sitting there trying to ride out around. <laughs> um, so just exciting, you know, exciting and, and technical, you know, like I'm a, I'm, a, I'm an instructor and, and, you know, my, my technique is always on point and, and I'm, you know, try to be sharp. So I'm always getting better. So, yeah, I don't know. Just freestyle, a, a really good technical freestyle fighter. <laughs> awesome, man. Yeah, I, I I agree with that. When I watch you fight, I think you're you're dynamic. You're frustrating to some people at times. Not not um to watch, but to the opponent, right. which right. is very important to do. So that means you take them out of your game. I feel like you seem comfortable in any scenario. So you you're very open. You're very willing to do anything. Mm-hmm. Because you're right, you're right. down with getting taken down, you're down with going for the takedown when it's presented. You're down to like mm-hmm. fight off the cage. You're down to to throw hands and feet. Um, mm-hmm. That's super important. And you you have you have a lot of poise in the in the cage or in the ring or wherever you're fighting. That's yeah. important as well. Like when when the guy's fighting, people don't take into account. But the opponent thinks about you during the fight, and that matters just as much. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. A lot of head games. Yeah. But dude, that's all I have today. I really appreciate you coming on. I don't know. Thanks a lot, man. Oh, somebody, yeah. No, I had, I had a lot of fun. Yeah. What? Somebody's got to change that sure dog picture of you from from 1989. <laughs> <laughs> Which one is it? Is it the one from Tough? It's just like, oh, I don't even know. Yeah. It's just like a really young picture of you, and I'm like, that doesn't yeah, look like yeah. Andy these days. Yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> I'll, I'll try to I'll, I'll figure out who I got to talk to yeah. to get, get a new picture on there. But, put that put um, that pink race with you the, with you holding the pink race belt picture up there. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. I should. Um, I'll get on that. Actually, yeah. that probably benefit me. Yeah, uh, to actually have that picture with the belt, right? You know, actually, that's where I like. I need somebody. I need somebody like you telling me this stuff. Yeah, bro, you can't have you looking like a teenager on sure dog. Yeah, man. Somebody um, tri- trips and lands on your sure dog page. They're gonna be like, "Who's this young, yeah, no bearded yeah. fighter?" And it looks like know. it's an old picture. It it might also look like you're not fighting anymore. Right, right. Because it's an old ass picture. Get it, get right, on right. there, sure, sure, dog. Come all on, right. man. All right, I'll, I'll get. I'm gonna get on. I'm gonna get on because I think there's a. Call. I think that one's out there all over the place. Yeah, man. Yeah, I'll get on that for sure. Yeah, man. You got that that healthy beard going now. You gotta. If you're gonna I grow, it, you gotta push it. You know. That's right. You're absolutely <laughs> right. Man. Absolutely right. And I'll be. I'll be fighting on UFC Fight Pass, man. My next fight will be headlining UFC Fight Pass again. So. Nice. So when is that? Um, again? Unlo- that's November 13th. Um, I'll be in Japan. I mean. It'll be live, but it'll be like 6 a.m. here because I'll be fighting around 7, 6, 7, 8 p.m. Um, Sunday over there. But, you know, Fight Pass puts the replay up right away. And, you know, I mean, it's the same weekend as the UFC, supposedly the UFC in New York City, the mm-hmm. Manha- the MSG card. So I, you know, there's always that chance somebody gets hurt and I'll already be, be training for a fight. So um, just putting it out know, there. I, and just I'm just throwing it out to the universe, <laughs> and whatever happens, you know what I mean. Yeah. I I don't wish ill will on anybody, but you know I hope I'm not going to say I don't hope somebody trips and stubs their toe and can't fight. Cause yeah. I'll be happy to step in. <laughs> Can you announce who you're fighting yet at Pancras or new? No? Um, I mean, I think technically I don't even know if I was actually supposed to <laughs> announce the date, but I mean they they haven't they did an interim belt while I was in while I was out because it's been a it's been, it'll it'll have been a year since I fought um and uh his something is it's, it's uh it's, it's a Japanese kid it's uh Tamara 
Um, he's the current interim champion, okay. and he he did he fought for uh, he he fought in the UFC. I want to say like a year and a half or two years ago, he was in the UFC. So it's good. I'm actually glad because you know the last the kid I was supposed to fight was like an up and comer, which you know I was happy to take that fight. But the more Zufa veteran, the I can I can not I can knock off uh, the better. I feel like it looks. <laughs> so um, yeah, so it's a it's a tough Japanese dude. You know, just gotta go out there and do the thing. That's it, man. I appreciate you coming on, man. I, I I wish you the best in your fighting career. I hope we can do this again soon. And I definitely yeah, want to definitely watch you on UFC Fight Pass live. If you yeah, like. yeah, yeah, man. And I appreciate, man. I, I'm looking forward to the uh, the next show, the Arts event. You guys know that Pure MMA is always open to uh, putting on whatever you guys are doing, so or or, or helping out. Thanks, you know, man. so for sure, man. Uh, our doors are always open. Is there anybody you want to give shout outs to before we end? Oh yeah, I mean, just you know, I mean, I think I already gave all the shout outs, you know, like <laughs> well, my, sponsors. My and stuff. Oh, oh, you no, know, man, I'm pretty much self represented at this point, you know, like I represent my own brand, um, but uh, you know, just just my coaches and you know my team, my family, all those all those guys, everybody, everybody, you know, who who deserves a shout out, you know, they they know who they are. They are uh, just the people that, like I said, the people that I fight for. All, all my mm. teammates, my my family, my my coaches, my fiance, you know, just the people that are important to me and everybody at Pure, man, everybody, all my students and, and everybody, like, they're so supportive. It's crazy. You know, I, really, I live, I really live a, a, a good life. <laughs> it's, it's, a, mm-hmm. it's a, you know, it, it, it's a good, good place to be having so many positive people around it around me andy main king of pancreas you heard it guys follow him on social media just look him up look up his school pure mma it's in new jersey if you're ever in need of a school and you're in his area follow him and try to push his agenda he's trying to get into the ufc he's a talented fighter and he would make a very good competitor honestly i I feel like you can compete with anybody in that featherweight division and, I'm uh, telling you, I'm telling thing. you, give me that shot, man. Give me that shot. <laughs> I, I honestly believe I'll be top five within a year. So let's do it, man. <laughs> let's let's get let's get me there. And yeah, we'll, we'll show the art, man. <laughs> That's who I want to shout out. I want to shout out. Show the art for real. Who are those guys? Show the art. STA, man. Come on. That's right. <laughs> what it's all about. Yeah, man. So, all right, man. This hey. is awesome. Thank yeah. you. Thank you for having me. No problem, man. Thanks a lot, and I'll talk to you soon. All right, brother. All right. Take care. As always, if uh, you're really interested in this podcast and you want us to continue to do it, please show us your support by going to iTunes and subscribing, by downloading, by giving us good ratings, whether it's on iTunes or any app that you have, whatever. Just try to find a way to give us a five-star rating and a review, and it goes a long way, trust me. And it helps us get more sponsors, which allows us to you know, just keep this ball moving. Also, if you have any guests or anybody you'd like to hear of on the podcast, try to get in touch with them and tell them to get in touch with us. Info at showtheart.com. If you guys have Facebook, we are posting links to subscribe to our new newsletter. And on that newsletter, we are going to just update everybody with all our new products, all the new uh, podcast episodes, everything that we have in one sourced email probably once every three weeks or every four weeks. Also, we will be doing a contest on that. One contest contest, sorry, a month, and we will be giving something away each month, whether it may be a gi, a rash guard, some coffee, um, anything. It might be a bundle package. It might be one thing, but the only way you can enter those contests is if you're already subscribed to our newsletter. So go check that out. Lastly, go to our website, showtheart.com, for some gear. we got T-shirts and tank tops and hoodies up there. Soon we're going to have rash guards. Just show your support, and, you know, if you like our stuff, purchase it. Boom.